Wow, my videos are finally taking off. Maybe I could justify quitting my full-time job that I hate. Let's see how much money I've made. Oh. Well, at least my videos are popular enough. Maybe one day. Oh. It's finally here, and I'm back to navigate this fucking train wreck making you sit through a 20 plus minute episode of me rambling about a decade old anime. Let's start this shit off with setting some ground rules. Now that they've introduced the sacrifice rule, people can no longer throw down their big ass boss monster and then gloat to the main characters going, You'll never defeat me! And then they somehow defeat them two minutes later. Joey also got a deck upgrade, but that's not really saying much considering his last one. Does Yugi really not remember what Bandit Keith sounds like? He literally just saw him a week ago. Your face? Uh, Yugi, did you not hear the demonic voice when he said your fate? Seems kind of suspicious. I wouldn't be open to handing him my Millennium Puzzle if I were you. You just had an internal monologue about how tons of people are after the puzzle, and then after he asks you once, you just hand it over? Hold on a second. In this scene, it shows that the warehouse is fully lit, but now that it's completely dark and there's a spotlight, where did that light come from? How did he make it so dark suddenly? How did he get this dueling arena into this abandoned warehouse, let alone get the electricity to power it? Keith says he has to beat Yugi in a duel to take the Millennium Puzzle, as it is a rule set in stone by the Magic Millennium items. Yet Bakora in the first season just took Pegasus's Millennium Eye, even though Yugi beat him. Oh, it is so infuriating that Yugi is such a fucking whipped bitch that anyone with a stern tone of voice can just convince him to do literally anything. But I've never fought a duel without you! Yugi even acknowledges that the fact that Yami is the reason why he wins all these duels. There's only one player I know whose deck is filled with machine cards! Is it really the only person in your mind that could possibly have machine monsters? It's not like they're an archetype that anyone can use. No, 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 no. Only Bandit Keith would ever use machine monsters. Hey, Makiyu's back, doing more shit it doesn't actually do. Like rusting machine-type monsters. Even when being mind-controlled, you can't stop Bandit Keith from cheating. Got to destroy it! If I can't have this puzzle, no one can! How did Merrick think that smashing the Millennium Puzzle would stop anyone else from having it? Yugi could just reassemble it, even though it may take a long time. When did Bakora get all this time to place these signs this far away from the warehouse? Guys, I've got to finish putting together the Millennium Puzzle! What does Yugi exactly expect to accomplish from rebuilding the puzzle? It's not going to make the building not on fire. Why not just stick the pipe in the hole and pull out instead of beating on it like a fucking ape? Hide in the hole and we'll both pull! Jesus Christ, took you long enough. You see, knock it off guys or I won't share my hospital food with you. Why would you want to share hospital food? That's just garbage. So theoretically, if they were playing on a more inclined plane, would you be able to see the slabs of what they were using? That sorcerer's a big mouth losing chump! You can't compare him to me! What are you talking about, Kaiba? You are a loud mouth losing chump. He even sounds like you. He had me bury them in secret locations, but the cards were discovered. Why not just rip them instead of going through this whole hassle? Aw oh, shit, did I miss a filler episode? Some kind of dueling dance game? My god, Yami, not everything is about dueling. The animation studio should really stick to monster fighting and not dancing. Also not copyright striking my videos. Never really understood how those two fused together made Musician King. Heavy Metal King isn't a monster despite how cool he really is. Metamorphosis doesn't make you keep gaining attack points each turn. I'm genuinely surprised that Kaiba would make a rule that actively hurts his deck, so now he can't just summon Blue Eyes White Dragon for free. You can't tribute summon monsters in face up defense position. You can only do it in attack and face down defense. It's basically just a normal summon. Destroy one dragon instantly when it switches from defense to attack mode. Dragon Seeker's effect is only when it's a normal summon or flipped face up, not when it changes battle position. In the end, even Yugi couldn't defeat the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The only reason you beat him was because you threatened to kill yourself. Do you not remember this? The only reason Kaiba hasn't lost yet is because the computer is too afraid to attack into his face down bluff card. Obelisk's real effect is if you tribute two monsters, you could destroy all the monsters on your opponent's field. Now, I'm just going to state this now, that all the god monsters have different effects in the show than in real life. I get they did this for the sake of giving them a larger-than-life status, so I kind of want to let them slide, but in the end, I'm going to be fair and criticize them for it. The ones were too advanced for me. They cost me to duel. 
The old dual disc is the reason you lost? I remember the fact that you kept throwing weak monsters at Kaiba's huge ass monsters and getting yourself fucking killed was the reason you lost, but I could be just remembering it wrong. Life lessons kids never run down dark alleys. Four kids at it again, censoring Joey being beaten up. How does Tristan have a motorcycle? Isn't he supposed to be a first year in high school? Four kids actually cut out the entire scene where Tristan finds Joey sulking on the beach and they have a heart to heart because Tristan punches him in the face later on to snap him out of it. Ah, the original dual disc. How you ruined so many kids' cards, myself included. Must have hacked into the system and added himself. That's illegal! He calls himself a rare hunter. If you're trying to sneak into a game tournament, why would you put your name down as the evil organization you're part of? Hey guys, I am Deadly Assassin. Yeah, Mokuba, it's just as I planned. I definitely didn't just get outsmarted and try to make myself not look like a retard. And with the help of some invisible ink and my x-ray contact lens... Man, those x-ray contact lenses would be really useful when trying to pull an ash blossom. He just played a trap card. He drew that turn. Light Force actually takes four turns, not three. Wow, I never thought the show would actually teach me about the importance of optimal deck building and ratios. What the fuck are those moves? Joey clearly showed that he knew how to tribute for larger monsters when he fought the rare hunters in the alley, but yet he forgets the next day and then acts like he never heard this rule before. Why does Joey just end his turn when he realizes he can't summon Gilfried? Couldn't he just do something else? Jesus Christ, Moku was such a terrible tournament organizer that everyone is cheating and the only one catching on to this is Yugi. Don't cheat me! Don't cheat me? You've been cheating this whole time, what are you on about? But Skull Dice only drops it by 100 points for each number it lands on, so if it landed on 5, it only drops it by 500 points. The Cyber Raider is still stronger than the Swordsman of Landstar. Mind Control is a spell card and it only lasts one turn. Amplifier only allows the owner of Jinzo to now use traps. It doesn't increase its attack points each turn. Is no one gonna call Joey out for summoning two monsters in one turn? My monster is made of a special dye titanium metal! It's made of what? Freaking me out! Guess who? That's just asking for you to get arrested. Roulette Spider's effect is actually based on rolling a six-sided dice. You didn't disappoint us! How is the earpiece so loud that even Joey can hear it? I summon Obelisk the Tormentor! Attack now! Kaiba didn't trivia anything to summon Obelisk and he attacks the first turn of the duel. Oh look, it's Shaco. Good old four kids, gotta censor the sharp objects, kids can't see saws, think of the children! Wait, what the fuck? That's the Winged Dragon of Ra in his hand! And now Obelisk is in his hand too? What?! Trimming cards was an actual serious issue in real life, so to stop this, Konami has a rule now where people have to wear sleeves if they are to compete in an event. Dark Renewal requires you to control a spellcaster monster, but Mystic Tomato is a plant type. Mystical Guillotine is actually a trap card called Tragedy. Monster Reborn isn't a quick play, so how did both of them activate Monster Reborn at the same time? People are still going to complain the anime was before the cards, but that's not going to stop me from pointing out cards that aren't real, like Beckon of the Dark and Nightmare Chains. Guess we haven't had any plot armor in the last few episodes, so we gotta meet our quota now. I really don't know how to talk about fake cards without it coming off redundant, but anti-magic arrows aren't real and neither is Shadow Balance. Its magic summoning power is available to both sides of the dueling field. Um, that's not how Dark Magical Curtain works. That kid's hair looks like a mustache. Come why does the Swordman of Landstar make that sound? Reckless Parasite isn't real. Parasite Parasite is actually censored in America. This is what it looks like in Japan, where the bug is actually growing out of somebody's face, similar to how it is with the monsters in the game. So you can't sacrifice a parasite-infected monster! Why can't he sacrifice infected monsters? Parasite Parasite only makes it so the monsters are insect types. Man, Konami made the most random cards back in the day. It's a monster that's even stronger than the Great Moth. Everyone keeps saying that it's stronger than the Great Moth, yet it's still weaker with the added attack. Joey would still take the damage even if his spell steals the opponent's monster. Soldier Ant isn't real. See, you could always tell when a card has either been edited in the show or it's completely made up for it because they have a different art style than other cards. This card takes one Soldier Ant and turns it into an army of ten ants! Ten monsters? You can only have five. You tell him! No way is he getting his hands on your power! I just did. Shut the fuck up, Yugi. When you fuse two monsters together, you must wait one turn before you can attack. No, you don't have to wait a turn for fusion monsters to attack. 
Revival Jam requires you to pay a thousand life points each time you want to revive it, so theoretically, if they did use this rule, this car would be pretty shit considering they only use 4,000 life points. The rules state you need to sacrifice three slime tokens to summon your one Egyptian god card. How does Yami know that Merrick needs three tributes to summon an Egyptian god card? It's not like it's ever been mentioned in the rules, nor does Yami have any memory, so how would he know that from his past life? Once I have all three, I'll have the most powerful deck in Duel Monsters. While, in theory, having three Egyptian god cards in your deck does sound really nice, how would you be able to summon them if all of them require three tributes? Not to mention the fact that your deck is also based around three giant monsters that need two tributes each. That's 11 tributes in total, so theoretically, if you had a hand of the three god cards, a blue eyes, and just any random spell, how would you do anything? You could just get fucking killed because you have four dead cards in your hand. Oh man, I really didn't know what Pot Agree did. Thank you for telling me for the thousandth time. Magic Cylinder doesn't need to be combined with a Magician card for it to work. You've activated my dragon's special ability! Time for the Egyptian God cards to have 13 special abilities added each episode. Magic Cylinder makes you take the damage of your monster's attack, so Revival Jam wouldn't work in this situation. Ever notice how their decks never get any thinner no matter how many turns pass and they draw so many cards? Of course, the one time I mentioned it, they actually change it because it's plot relevant. Kaiba, you're scaring poor little Karibo! Parasite Parasites should have been flipped face up when attacked, so the effect should have still gone off. Joey actually did something right for once, even if he had no idea he did. People, myself included, ridicule Merrick for being a shitty and dumb villain, but when you think about it, Bakora's spirit is even worse than him. I have used nothing but a small wooden fishing boat! That seems really inefficient to use, Mako. Alligator Swordsman text is even written as if Joey wrote it himself. Hey, this mighty lizard man can swing his sword so fast that it's more than the speed of sound. Joey has pulverization in his deck! What? Ugh, here we go again with his underwater shit. Fall off the storm and release your tornadoes. I can take it. Joey, you realize that the water is a hologram. If he releases the tornadoes, nothing is going to happen to you. Energy Drain is a trap card. Legendary Fisherman Spear is actually censored in America. Mako's dad actually died, but four kids decided to change it because real life topics can't exist in anime. No, sir. Mm -mm. Since Panther Warrior needs a sacrifice in order to attack, why would you play a card that requires a tribute to attack? That's so fucking awful. Joey, you realize you can't activate equip spells in the middle of battle. You just killed your panther warrior and yourself. Hey, you gotta discard a card to use Return of the Doom. Holy shit, for once they used a good card in the anime. And now a word from our sponsor. What the fuck was that? Who put that in my video? How are those little tiny puzzle pieces supposed to form a map? So what happens in the event if you beat six people that all have the same locator card as you? Do you just not get the directions to where the finals are? You'd think after the third time Mokuba was kidnapped that you just have him handcuffed to your right arm at all times. Displayed in the magic shadow box. Magic shadow box? Really? You mean the bomb that will break the glass causing you to fall to your death? Who the fuck do you think you're kidding, poor kids? Mask doll isn't real. Work as a team as well as you can, Rare Hunters! Hmm, <laughs> no thanks. Remember what happened the last time you didn't work as a team, Kaiba? The face! I'm back in Warrior! Not so fast, Yugi! Unless it's a card like Solemn Warning, you can't interrupt a normal summon. The tribute should have gone through. He couldn't activate Mask of Restrict. You couldn't possibly make things any worse than you already have, Yugi. Kaiba keeps going on about how it's Yugi's fault that they can't tribute summon, but the fact that as soon as he tried to summon his god card, they would have activated the Mask of Restrict. Yugi going first doesn't change the fact that they still had Mask of Restrict set to begin with. All up to Mokuba now. Great idea, just leave it in the hands of the most useless character in the show next to Bakora. Magnet Warriors on the field at the same time! I can activate their special ability! 
Wait, the Magna Warriors have no special abilities, they're vanilla monsters. Magic card Soul Exchange, which lets me sacrifice your three Magnet Warriors! You can only tribute one of their monsters with Soul Exchange, so your plan doesn't really work, Kaiba. Sorry. Oh, sick, a recap episode. I guess I could skip this one and save some time. Is it me or did that animation of Joey taking Merrick's cards look super weird? Now, Mr. Kaiba. Hey guys, I think I see someone on the pier. And it kinda looks like Joey. How the fuck did you see that all the way down there? Oh shit, Raigeki, I guess we're using good cards now. Are you fucking kidding me? You're expecting me to believe that dice beat them that easily? I guess I must have been a really stupid kid back in the day, because it took me forever to realize that was a smiley face. This episode is so unrealistic. You expect me to believe that Joey has the mental capacity to fight off brainwash from Egyptian dark magic? Attrition isn't a real card. Why did Red Eyes look like it was melting in that shot? Did I miss something that Yugi's now on the verge of collapsing beaten? He could have attacked us! Instead, he left himself wide open for us to attack him! See what I'm saying when I call Merrick a dumb villain? He doesn't think that this is what Yugi wants him to do. Instead he goes, Ha ha! He didn't attack! I guess he doesn't have it in him! Completely ignoring the fact that Yugi set two cards face down. <laughs> Into its invincible mode! Rocket Warrior has no such thing as an invincible mode. I bet Kim Jong-un would love to know about this invincible rocket mode. Wait, we see all the ice go into the cup. How is it as soon as it changes shots, it's now all over the table? Tristan is a fool if he thinks anyone other than a main character would have six locator cards. Doesn't he understand how anime works? Man, it feels like a lot of these recent episodes have been padded with a lot of flashbacks. I feel like I'm watching Naruto again. I really don't get why they didn't just use the original card art for Meteor Destruction instead of using whatever the fuck this is. Four kids just doesn't make sense sometimes. Hunter, say hello to my blue eyes white dragon card! Why would you throw your most prized possession where there only is three in the world across a pier? Time! Ref panel, direct your attack toward me! You can't tell a trap to redirect effect on yourself. That would be stupid. I set myself face down and end my turn. In the dub, the dynamite that's connected to the timer atop the anchor is actually removed. Why are you just standing there, you moron? Unlock yourself and go save Yugi! Why is Yugi hurt? This is still only a hologram-based duel. Meteor of Destruction has another effect! Meteor of Destruction doesn't have a second effect. Also, the duel is already over. Yugi's life points have hit zero long before this. Ice Black Dragon, attack! Wipe out my life point! How did Joey get Yugi's monster to attack him? I'm sorry, but what part of battle phase is this? Joey getting in some practice for his role as Caesar in the next Planet of the Apes movie. You had 30 seconds to unlock yourself. Why are you still attached to this damn thing? Mai actually slapped Joey across the face. Notice how the show fast cuts as soon as she starts walking up to him, and then it immediately cuts to Joey holding his face as if he was hurt, not to mention a slap mark. Okay, that's actually a really cool way to show a map. Man, you could really tell the cards are edited in this episode because of the red mist. In all fairness, it must have been actually pretty hard to layer the cards below the red mist. Shallow Grave makes both players special a monster face down from their graveyard. How does a dragon in Medusa make a mammoth skeleton? Creature so terrifying, it will send shivers down your spine. Shivers down my spine? Oh no, not a skeleton of an extinct animal, anything but that! Skull invitation card will severely damage your life point! Uh, severe damage. It only deals 300 for each card. Spiritualistic medium, while a cool name, isn't a real card. So is this idiot just carrying this ring around the whole time? Big girl now, Jimmy! No, his name is Joey. How did a hologram pick her up? The solid vision wasn't invented until Arc V. You see, Yugi and Bakura both had these real old objects that have magic powers. Yugi's item is good, but Bakura's item is bad. Listening to Joey explain the Millennium items is the most entertaining thing about this show so far. Five points you lost will simply be added to mine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dark Sanctuary doesn't add life points. Good old Destiny Board. Can't spell death. The kids can't see a word. Better make it just say final. See, in all in order to keep my Dark Sanctuary card in play, I need to sacrifice a monster each turn! You don't have to sacrifice to keep Dark Sanctuary alive. He can't just take control of one of Yugi's monsters without him knowing. Does he not see the flying ghosts going into them? Sangen's special effect allows me to draw one more card after it's been sent to the graveyard. Sangen doesn't let you draw a card when it's destroyed. It lets you search a monster. Come on, you've already had it in the fucking show during the Rebecca fight. I get it, it's filler, but still, like, come on. 
So, Exile of the Wicked, wipe out my Karibo and his dark ghost. What happened to respecting all your monsters and not tossing them aside that you've been going on about in previous duels? Is it only okay now because you have to win? So if the spirit possessing you these monsters is the Dark Sanctuary's effect, him destroying the Kariba with the spirit in it wouldn't stop it because Dark Sanctuary is still on the field. Cyberjar is drawn as a spell here. Attempting to recreate the images of the Egyptian god monsters, you've unleashed a dangerous force far beyond your comprehension. So drawing the god cards makes them real? If I just sketched them out on paper, would I get divine power? Yeah! Show Tattoo Face what dueling's all about, Joey! Yeah, Joey, you shuffle that deck real hard. You show him who's boss. God, I fucking hate the existence of Taya so much you don't understand. She's so annoying and she exists to explain things to retards that watch this show or to recap episodes because this is a fucking weekly cartoon. Like, if she didn't talk in most of these scenes, there wouldn't be missing anything. She could still be a character, but she's just an info dump. And it's so frustrating because I'm watching them in succession and I know what's happening. You don't have to fucking remind me and you don't have to explain what's going on. Each time, literally anybody does anything. It's also super fucking infuriating that every two minutes something happens, Taya turns to Yugi and goes, Oh, Yugi! I'm like, bitch, he's not even in this fucking episode. I'm not going to fucking forget his name is Yugi. Oh my God, he's the main character. Thank you for fucking reminding me the 10th fucking time this episode. God damn it. Why is the art on Judgment of Anubis so ugly. Judgment of Anubis is full monster attack points, but they had to change it because if not, Joey would have lost the duel right there. We're now getting to the part where a lot of the Egyptian-based trap and spell and monster cards aren't real, mainly only used by Odeon and Merrick himself. Everything else, for the most part, from now on, is actually real, it just uses the wrong effect. This is our first introduction to trap-based monsters, which would then lead on to one of my most favorite decks, Paleozoics. Foolish Burial sends a monster from your deck to the grave, not from your hand to the opponent's grave that's just dumb and also it's not a quick play so joey couldn't have activated on odeon's turn still wrong like last season but grave robber is a trap and it only gets a spell from the graveyard not a monster so this whole play would actually be pointless the Cup of Sealed Souls and the Seal of Circuit aren't real. Hunters reproduce counterfeit cards. These forgeries are exact duplicates of the original Winged Dragon of Ra and equally as powerful. So if you can make exact copy counterfeits of the god cards that have the same power, why not just make copies of the other two instead of going through this whole stupid scheme? Rule the world, and then after you do that, get the real ones. Oh, man! A polymerization card? That's no help now! Oh look, for once the anime acknowledges that Joey's deck is a bunch of shit thrown together that doesn't mesh well, relying on one combo to win every time. Last season being Baby Dragon and Time Wizard, and this season being Jinzo and the Dice. Or at least Red Eyes before he got Jinzo. Serket only gains 500 attack each time. How will this change me? Mother, does this mean I'll be exactly like you and father? Oh god, where did they get Odeon's child voice? It sounds like he's a hundred feet away from the mic and they're using the high school 2 PS2 game microphone. Jeez. Wait, Odeon! <gasps> Stop your attack! Hey! You can't stop a monster's attack midway through, that's bullshit. Uh Merrick, Odeon literally has the duel won already. You're making him play Ra loses you the game. I know there were difficulties at first with some of my weaker servants. Wait, so you actually didn't make successful copies? Then why did you say it did in the first place? Good job, Merrick. You fucked yourself over in the end, revealing your identity and got the only person who ever loved you killed. Good job, dude. Okay, who's going out of control with the expand tool in Photoshop over Merrick's face now in every scene? Thanks to Odeon's failure. Odeon's failure? How could you put the blame on anyone but yourself for him losing the duel making him play raw? I guess we ran a budget for the episode. Good job, Joey. Literally every chance you get, you ruin your relationship with Mai. Well, I guess Merrick now gets a passing grade in the stupid anime villain look department. Oh god, not this shit again. Taya's gotta get her job quota of being the flashback machine for this episode. Where you go? You need to know! What happened to assisting duelists during the middle of their duel results in them getting a game loss? He just normal summoned the four-faced beast. He can't just tribute it to summon the mass beast the same turn. He has to wait one. If you're wondering why after he activated the pot of greed that showed the life point gauge of Merrick's duel disc, it's because it's supposed to say draw, but it was changed by four kids for an unknown reason. 
See how the Millennium Rod has the pointed end in this shot, but now it has a flat end in this scene? In Odeon's room, it's because four kids edit out the hidden dagger that's sheathed in the tip of the rod. Because Merrick is supposed to kill Odeon in this scene, but they cut it out because of course you can't have murder in a kid show. Taya's been erased from Mai's mind! Good, now if only they could remove Taya from the show completely. Guess he forgot to mention he has to dump the rest of his hand, requiring at least one card. But as you can see in this scene, he has no cards left, so he couldn't actually activate Rope of Life, bringing back Makiura. Why didn't you use the puzzle powers when fighting Bakora or Joey? That seemed like they would be really useful in those situations. Grave arm isn't real. When one of my monsters' attack points is decreased. It's only if the attack becomes zero. Can't let the kids see handcuff and chains. Gotta make them bonds of light. The winged dragon. Good lord. Kai was about to cream his pants waiting to see Robbie summoned. You're reading the ancient text written on the bottom of the card. Why didn't Odeon have to read this quote unquote ancient text? to summon Ra in the last duel. Wait, what the fuck? That wasn't there two seconds ago. Why is there this suddenly, there's ancient text that no one's mentioned before thrown in so Merrick can still win even though Mai outplayed him and should have won the duel. Guess we just can't have a B character beat the main villain. Gotta have Yugi do it. Finally get to see how it works. Kaiba keeps going on about needing to know what Ra does, but Odeon said it the duel before. He just heard Merrick say the chant. Why does he need to translate it? How are you supposed to have a duel be suspenseful or entertaining when one of the opponents knows the outcome of everything in this duel? How dare you insult my family? How dare you call my brother who has brainwashed thousands of people and killed six that we have seen on screen insane? I never... Holy shit, back in the day, Crush Card Virus was so OP. In the Japanese version, Virus Cannon is a spell card, but in the American version, they changed it so Virus Cannon is a trap, just like it is in real life. So for once, the American Bork Kids version was actually right. I don't really know who to blame for this, since the fact that in the Japanese original version, Virus Cannon was a spell, so the turn that Kaiba draws it, he plays it, So, but in the American version, it's a trap, so that leads to confusion of how is he using a trap on his first turn? Mugu makes you discard cards drawn by effects, not ones that you get just during your normal draw phase. Soul Exchange only lets you use one of the opponent's monsters, so Kaiba's whole plan of stealing all three doesn't really work. The secret trap card infected Obelisk the Tormentor. How is your trap already taking effect if you haven't activated it yet? But it's even stated in the anime that Obelisk is supposed to be unaffected by spell and traps, so how is Kaiba forced to lose this? It won't be controlled! He says he won't be controlled, yet he listened to the Millennium Rod, which told him the way to win. So does that not count as being controlled? Merrick actually kills his father with a hidden blade at the bottom of the Millennium Rod, as stated before, but of course this scene was cut in the 4Kids version. Multiple destruction makes you put your hand at the bottom of your deck. I mentioned my new monster's special ability. No bitch, you just summoned the monster. You didn't tell me what it does. I wonder if they did the whole you're losing your body with your life points thing to save budget so they didn't have to draw the characters. You can't change Ra's battle position the turn you summoned him. Dragon of Ra seems to possess several special abilities that aren't even written on the card. This scene exists to foreshadow all the ass pulls that Ra is going to do in episodes to come. Wise up, you fool! Even the good Merrick sounds like an asshole. With no help from anyone, except for myself. With nobody's help except for myself, except for Yugi, and Yami, and Shizu, and Obelisk. Oh, you can't forget the Millennium Rod, considering the fact he won you the last duel. If you guys made it this far, I really want to thank you for sitting through 20 plus minutes of me rambling about a decade old anime. I'm not exactly sure how I want to format the season 3 episode. I'm considering maybe splitting it into two parts, considering that half of it is all about Kaiba's brother and father, and then the rest is actually pursuing Merrick. So the Merrick episodes would be part B, and then the Kaiba's family part would be A. But you guys should leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Please subscribe for further updates and follow me on Twitch and Twitter. See you guys in Season 3.